on to the second part of the first theme which talks about Harappan civilization. So, so far we talked about Harappan civilization, Mohanjodaro as one of the major centers, the basic domestic architecture, the architecture of the city, the drainage system and the craft. Now we would see how there were contacts that were done with distant lands. So, few of the major areas were Mesopotamia. So, contacts with Mesopotamia, Dilman, Magan and Meluha. And then Turan were the major areas where contacts of Harappan civilization were there. Now copper was brought from Oman and this was also called as Magan. Now as I suggested the Omani copper, the uh, things made of Omani copper as well as the Harappan copper had presence of nickel, similar structure, similar things and also they had a unique uh, structure that there was a thick layer of black clay and this thick layer of black clay ensured that there is no percolation of water. So this was again a similarity that indicated that yes there was a trade relation that existed between Magan which is Oman the present day Oman and the regions of Harappan civilization. Mesopotamia also had uh, things coming in from Dilman which is the present day Bahrain. There are also um, sections where Magan and Mehula are known for trade on lapis lazuli, carnelian, copper, gold, uh, varieties of wood. So lapis lazuli and carnelian both of them are the most important ones. Lapis lazuli as we understood in the previous class was a blue stone which was highly valuable coming from the region of Mehula. So uh, Mesopotamian text also refers Mehula as this land of seafarers. That means most of the trade came here through the sea and we find similar depictions even in the seals where ships and boats have been made on the seals. The next is seals, scripts and beads. Uh, now seals, how we understand this? The idea was when there is a long distance communication. Let's say I am moving the thing from location A to location D. Now from this to this location, I parcel it and I put a seal. Now if that seal remains intact when the thing reaches the other end that indicates that yes the thing has not been tampered and it has been received as being sent. Also the seal sometimes had the name and the title of the owner. Now these were some of the symbols and signs which were used in the Harappan civilization. Now most of the inscriptions were short. The longest so far found is of 26 signs. The script so far we have not been able to understood but yes one thing is very clear it was written from right to left. Another interesting thing was on the right side the words were the signs were at distance. However as the person started writing from right to left the signs came closer which indicated that there was lack of space to keep it clear. Okay, so there was a whole lot of cramping we could say on the left side which was seen. Also, uh, seals, rims of jars, we can say terracotta tablets uh, were some of the important sign boards which were mentioned. The next is the weight system. Now weight system was very unique. If I talk about the weights which were in lower denomination, they were binary. That means it was 1, 2, 4, 8, 16 and so far. So far. However, those with higher denomination were used with decimal system. So both binary and decimal system were known to them. Another important and interesting parameter. The next is the authorities during the ancient time. During the ancient time, there were uh, various opinions. Some of them said that uh, all of them, uh, all of the people within the uh, civilization enjoyed equal status. Some said that there was not a single ruler but many people who ruled. Others said that all of the independent settlements had a single state which was which they had a head body and uh, this was seen because there was a standardized ratio for the bricks. Now if the building material or the bricks had a standardized ratio across all settlement it indicates that there was a common phenomena. Also the arrangement of brick was important. So one layer was like this, the other layer was like this, the third layer was like this and the fourth layer was like this. This indicated a stable structure with more durability. Now the authorities as I said 
there was nothing which was labeled as a palace but archaeologists associated something with the other and there was a statue something like this which was found and this figure was known as priest king so priest king was the highest authority that was considered now how did this civilization ended is another important question there have been various uh, conflicts and various uh, ideas which propounded this uh, cholistan which was one of the areas of pakistan the region of desert in pakistan separated from the thar desert of india uh, saw that it is started to begin uh, begin uh, begin or it is started to be abundant and most of the new settlements even in the regions of gujarat uttar pradesh rajasthan saw that they were slow flourishing at a good pace till some time and then they started to disappear the writings the ceilings the seals started to disappear now there were range of reasons that were put forward for this some indicated there was a flood other said there was a climate change uh, there was an idea of shifting of river course uh, drying of river was another viewpoint overuse of nature during that time was another important cause that was held so there were multiple causes that were propounded however we could not come out with one solid reason why harappan civilization disappeared but yes there was a definite shift during the late period from the standardized weight system to the use of local weights uh, the cities started to get abandoned also uh, there was disappearance of the seals disappearance of the distinct form of pottery and art which was used now how the civilization was discovered kuningham was one of the major and the first director general of archaeological survey of india and he began his excavations during mid 19th century somewhere in around 1875 kuningham saw a harappan seal now when he was gifted this harappan seal which is a figure here he said that this resembles to the structures which were seen in the ganga civilization however this was a misinterpretation and there were uh, the documents which were collected during his time which were surveyed later so dayaram sahani rakhaldas benerji were some of the scholars who worked forward on excavating the archaeological remains from the regions of harappa later on john marshall came and john marshall was there in 1924 and he became the director general of archaeological survey of india and led the discovery of the indus valley civilization he uh, has been noted that there were remains which were more than 3000 years old however at that time he said that the stratigraphy was in horizontal layers according to john marshall however this was the real structure of the uh, stratigraphy it was not in a horizontal bed horizontal bed and this was discovered later by uh, r e m wheeler so wheeler uh, talked about that the same units were grouped together but the stratigraphy was not horizontal and this was one of the major features that were brought by wheeler so wheeler excavated harappa later on s r rao excavated lothal b l lal and b k thapar at kalibanga bhavalpur by m r mughal and then there were archaeologists coming from different world different parts of the world and r s bisht started the excavations at dholavira so those were some of the major series of excavations that have been seen international collaborations have come forward to understand this civilization the techniques and the models that were used to understand recover the clay the stone the metal artifacts that were present now how would we pierce the past how do we th think about the things that existed so first as we classify the material by classifying the material we understand to which era it be belonged was it after chalcolithic period which indicated that yes copper was used during that time then we identify the function and then we understand the function of the things that were used now here is a very classic example now seeing this some of them said that this is, these are lingas lingas are the shiva uh, statues which are worshiped so uh, some of them said that these were lingas but on the other end there were archaeologist who said that these were board games so this brings in how do you piece the past that means how do you interpret the past 
This was not just one. There were uh, various such figures. For example, this is a figure of Proto Shiva. Now, Proto Shiva was one of the important seals which were found in the Rig Veda text as well. So, under Rig Veda, it was named as the Ro Lord Rudra, and later it was called as Shiva in Puranic text. So, in the Rig Veda, it was called as Rudra and in the uh, Purans, it was called as the Shiva tradition. However, this particular structure was considered as either a Pashupati or a Yogi and some of them said that these could be Shamans. Shamans were the people who had magical powers for healing and these could be male or female de deities. Similarly, were animals with one horn, they were called as unicorns. They were again uh, considered as mythical creatures by some composite creatures by other so there were various uh, views this proto shiva was considered as shiva by some shamans by others yogis by another rudra by others so the interpretation of the past is again a big deal that we need to understand so this was a second uh, basic idea about the harappan civilization that we have covered in this theme the next theme would start with uh, the uh, establishment of towns trade and small settlements so we, we would talk about the various new empires like the guptas the mauryas and their establishment across india the major things during their tenure so this was about the first theme if you have any questions feel free to post those in the comment section and yes we do have the important links in the description do follow wish you good luck